Who here likes playing video games? Even if you don't play regularly, raise your hands up. Like most of you, it seems, I like playing video games as well. Video games can be somewhat beneficial as they're educational games, but come on, nobody plays these. They're not as fun as normal video games. Should I carry on with talking about the benefits of video games? Well, then my speech will probably end in the next few seconds. I would like to ask you another question. Who here thinks that they have developed a video game addiction? Almost nobody thinks that they have developed a video game addiction. However, it is a massive problem among young people as it isn't easily noticeable until at a severe state. So many all around the world are currently addicted without even realizing their condition. Addiction is so difficult to break free from, yet so easy to fall into, like falling into a black hole of some sort. I mean, the way you develop this addiction is just by playing video games after all. This is shown by the statistics. According to a systematic review and meta-analysis done by a group of researchers in 2021, around 3% of all gamers have gaming addiction. This is a shocking number considering the number of worldwide gamers, which is estimated to be 3 billion people. Unfortunately, this number is increasing by 5% each year, and it has worsened over the past few years as gaming technology developed, making them more immersive and realistic. Take a look at this graph here. You can see the increase between 2019 and 2020. However, we might also focus on the fact that there has been a steady increase from 2016 onwards as gaming technology developed, making them more immersive and realistic to hook onto gamers and causing more addictions. You might think that gaming addiction, it's just a scare tactic created by parents and teachers to stop you from playing video games, right? Well, no, the WHO, or World Health Organization, recognizes video game addiction in the name gaming disorder as a legitimate psychological disorder. However, because of boundaries of addiction can be so vague, the WHO only recognizes it if uh, the symptoms have been continuing for more than 12 months, resulting in a severe state. According to this criteria, around 80 million people are addicted, which is almost the entire population of Turkey. Video game addiction can cause consequences in a person's education, social life, and psychological well-being. Firstly comes the most critical issue for students, studying. When you play video games for a long time, you can't easily turn them off, especially if you're addicted. And if you try to study but are addicted to video games, your mind will naturally distract itself from video games and from studying and onto video games. You can't escape. However, you might still be distracted by video games even if you're not addicted. For example, a few months ago, I was studying for a test, but I didn't want to study. I wanted to play FIFA instead. So while, while studying, I kept thinking about the World Cup update, which I installed the day before. And then, well, eventually, and inevitably, I lost focus. So you don't need to start panicking just now. If, however, you are one of those people who are constantly distracted by video games, you might want to look in front of a mirror and think about how much it might be affecting you. It might not be affecting you right now, but maybe in a few years, it might affect your grades and possibly your whole future. Communicating can also be a problem. You might think that while you play video games, you talk to other people, right? Well, half right, half wrong. The point I'm trying to make here is the lack of face-to-face -face communication and social interaction. Often, the values of face-to-face -face communication is underestimated. However, it is an important skill needed everywhere in life. Some places where you use face-to-face -face communication is school, work, and basically everywhere. Video game addiction can also cause psychological effects such as anxiety and sleep deprivation, both of which are hard to treat, 
maybe even harder than the addiction itself, permanently leaving a mark. This is often caused by the loss of time perception or the sense of time passing by. This sense is often lost when you're excited and engaged about something, something like playing video games. Have you seen video game images when your eyes are closed? Or have you heard video game sounds when you're not playing them? Then you might have game transfer phenomena. Sounds weird, right? Well, it is. It is behaviors and actions caused by video game information and experiences being transferred to the real world. Some symptoms include alternation of visual and or audio perceptions, so seeing or hearing things while you're not playing video games, automatic thoughts, so using video game elements in the real world, alternation of body perceptions, and finally, behavior and action changes, which could include singing, saying, or shouting something out from a video game at a random situation. For example, you could answer a teacher's question with a video game phrase. Now, even though I have been talking about the detrimental aspects of video games, let's not forget that in moderation, video games can help with escaping the stresses of our lives. However, because too much isn't good for anyone, finding the suitable balance is important. Have a think about what you think is a suitable balance and try it for yourself. As they say, you want a console to console you, but you don't want their friend controllers to control you. Thank you and have a good day.